In my last video, which was five more things that I hate about my BMW Z4, which is sitting over there, I said if it got 100 likes that my next video would be five more things that I love about my BMW Z4, just to balance things out and keep things fair. However, I've got lots of things to say that I love about this car, so I'm very pleased to say I did get 100 likes, so here we are. Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if it's not welcome back and it's welcome for the first time, um, welcome. <laughs> uh, please make yourselves at home, browse through all of the videos I've been making. I've been uh, plowing through content recently, so there's lots of stuff for you to watch. Um, but yeah, all importantly, hit that subscribe button so that you do not miss any upcoming content. That's enough of me wobbling, wobbling on. Is that a word? Can we make that a word? Let's, I don't know, leave a comment below. Let's, uh, let's stop wobbling on and uh, get into the topic of this video, which is five more things that I love about my Z4. And that, ladies and gents, brings me very nicely onto my first point, uh, which is the first thing I love about my Z4 is the sound of it. Now, as with the last video, I did make a uh, five things I love video as well, uh, back when I made the original five things I hate. And in that video, one of the things I said I loved was the sound. So I am technically repeating myself. However, since I made that previous video, I have had my back, back box deleted, which uh, if you've been following for a while and you've been following my Instagram and subscribed to this channel, you'll know about that because I've been going on about it since I got it done uh, because it sounds like this. overrun a little bit yeah uh, I mean I think it sounds absolutely fantastic not for everyone because this car does sound brilliant stock it really does you get a really nice raspy straight six sounds that BMW manufactured into the car however for me deleting that back box has just accentuated that and yes it means it is loud all the time but it does mean that you get those backfires, which for me, just every time puts a smile on my face. Anyway, a little bit earlier, I took the liberty of sticking a GoPro right next to the exhaust, so uh, you can hear properly how it sounds like. GoPro footage doesn't convince you that this does sound great. Uh, I don't know what will, but yeah, that was my first thing I love about this car. I look forward to driving it every time it's doing it now. Because of it, uh, it's the sound. So then, I'm gonna be a little bit more original with my second point, as it's not what I've mentioned in a video before, but the second thing that I love about my Z4 is the sport mode button. So, I'm not sure all of these have them, but I mean, I've got one, every other three litre I've been in has got one, and my dad's 2.5 has got one. So actually, in other words, every, every single Z4 I've seen uh, has one. Although that Alpina Z4 that I drove a couple of weeks ago, if you haven't seen that video, it's linked up there. That didn't have a sport mode. However, I personally love the sport mode. Uh, I mean, what does it do? It's really hard to convey that through a video. Um, I can try and talk about it and demonstrate it as best as I can. Essentially, I think what sport mode does is it stiffens the steering. If I switch it on now, that is that is noticeably stiffer to me. Uh, take it off. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's quite subtle, but I, I do notice it. Um, and the main thing that you notice when you switch it on is it 
what's the word? I can't think now. It uh, speeds up the throttle response. So I think what, what it does is it's programmed so that with sport mode on, you only need to press the pedal, the throttle pedal, 70% of the way down to get full power. Whereas with it off, you know, obviously it needs to go all the way down for you to get that power. But if you switch it on, you get it quicker. So it basically just makes the, I guess it makes accelerations more brutal and it certainly increases the throttle response. So I don't use sport mode all the time, but I, I definitely, if I'm going out to have a you know, great blast, a good hoon, uh, which I mean is what I always do in this car, I love it. Uh, sport mode definitely comes on, uh, along with the traction controls come off, so you've just got all that power and you've got, you know, a stiff sort of... I mean, look at this, I, I've, I'll build the revs up to about four, three and a half thousand, and then if you let off and... You know, that's pretty brutal and it's pretty instant. Um, anyway, but that's, that's why I love sport mode. It is a subtle... A subtle thing. Lots of people don't actually notice it, uh, but for me, I, I think it's brilliant. So then, on the contrary, um, we've been talking about sport mode, which is obviously great for when you're hooning the car about and, and disregarding anything practical you just want to go fast now my third point is completely opposite to that and it's another thing i love about this car which is its fuel economy it's actually very very reasonable i mean compared to new cars where you can get upwards of 70 miles per gallon nowadays it's nothing but i generally average 30 31 miles per gallon in this car now i think i did cover this in a previous video about how much this car costs to run but it does tie in nicely to that and it is something I love about this car because it is relatively affordable to run in terms of fuel. Now of course the fuel economy you actually end up getting will vary person to person because it's completely based on how, how you drive the car. Um, but I think my, my average is quite a good indication because I, I use this Z4 every single day. Um, and you know when I'm driving to work and driving back from work I mean, I don't drive like a granny, but I'm driving relatively, you know, slowly and I let the car warm up and I'm in sixth gear a lot. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm driving quite like, epino there. I'm driving quite economically. However, today when I come out and film a video and I'm doing lots of accelerations and this, that and the other, that all goes into the average because I don't reset this often. And it is reading 31 mpg. So, and, and that actually I reset 500 miles ago. So over 500 miles of my day-to-day -day driving, I've averaged 31 mpg, which I think is actually really, really good considering how I drive this car normally. So obviously 31 mpg isn't that special. However, I have, I have done long distance journeys before. I sort of fill up a tank, drive up the M1, you know, to the Midlands where my family are, and you know, I'll, I'll do a whole tank, say, and I can get over 40. I've had, I think I had, I think I drove to Sheffield once on one tank. I was cruising, cruise control on, 75 miles per hour, and gear six all the way up the M1. And I got like 43 mpg by the time I arrived. So that is, that's remarkable for a big three litre car, naturally aspirated. You know, the torque is all relatively high up. So you've got to, you've got to floor it to get that power most of the time. Uh, but yeah, I think 43 miles per gallon from something like this is brilliant. Um, so, although although when you drive badly, you can get less than 20 mpg, which I have done before. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that. You know, it's, it's amazing that you can, if you want to, get over 40 mpg in this. It's always good to know. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it, it just adds to the whole sort of practicality and affordability thing of this car. So uh, yeah, that's why fuel economy is my number three point. I hope you agree. Uh, I, mean, I, think that's, I think that's brilliant for a car like this to get that sort of MPG. So then, point number four. Um, can you guess what it is? This car is a manual. 
everyone loves a manual. Uh, I mean, not everyone, but people love manuals, and I think people are starting to think about how good manuals are and how they wish their car was a manual and how they wish they had a manual car. Obviously, this Z4 is a six-speed manual, and I think it's an absolutely brilliant gearbox. I've never actually owned an automatic car, and to be totally honest, my next car probably will be. I'd like something with flappy paddles. However, I do love this gearbox. It is brilliant. It, the throws are so, so nice. A lot of you are going on at me on Instagram and in the comments on YouTube saying, I need to change my uh, gear shifter. And I have actually ordered a new one, so that'll be coming soon, and I'll show you that as soon as I've got it. But the throws are lovely. And again, when you want to drive this car hard, brilliant. You know, you can rev match this, heel and tow it, slam the gears in, no problem. But also when you want to cruise, I can just sort of slap it about and it's just so easy to use. The clutch is really light, it's brilliant. I think it's one of the, the best gearboxes I've ever driven. And I think it is fascinating how when this car came out about 10 or 15 years ago, automatic cars were more desirable. I mean, if you were to buy a Ferrari 430 when that came out around 2005, I think you had to pay something like six or seven thousand pounds to have the automatic F1 flappy paddle gearbox. Whereas nowadays, if you look on Auto Trader at the used market for say a Ferrari F430, you will pay like 20, 30 grand more for one that's a manual. So I think, I think in an ideal world, I would always have a manual car in my garage because it, it really does just add to the whole sensation of being in control of a, of a car. And obviously when you're, when you're going along at speed and you have to take a hand off the wheel to slam it in a gear, it just, you know, it just makes you feel so much more connected with the car. And it, it does make sense. I have driven DSG gearboxes and there is something about a manual which is special. The reason, if you're wondering why I'm saying my next car will probably be an auto of some kind, is just because of the amount of driving I do. Uh, I can't afford to have two cars, not at least now anyway. So, you know, if I only can have one, I'd probably prefer something that for day-to-day -day driving is a lot easier. However, uh, it does have the flappy paddle when I want to drive spiritedly. But anyway, yes. Wobbling on again, if that's, that's the word I used earlier. Uh, I, lo I love the manual in this. I think it's a great car. I think it's perfect for a manual. I wouldn't have it any other way with this Z4. Uh, but yeah, I love the manual gearbox in this car. So my fifth and final point for this video is probably the most important one and the most, most profound, if you can say that. It is the price. So what I mean by that is the price of this car. This particular car is over 130,000 miles now. It's a 2004 model, three litre manual Z4. And if I was to put this on the market, I'd probably get around 4,000 pounds for it. So, that may or may not shock some of you, but for those of you that weren't aware of how affordable these cars are, it's incredible. You can you can pick these up for around three grand. The cheapest ones on Auto Trader, maybe not a three litre, but three litres certainly around three and a half, four grand. You can pick these up. And this has been so, so reliable. It's not very expensive to run. If you're coming out of a normal, average, everyday car, you might just notice that brakes and tires are slightly more expensive by maybe 20 or 30% if you do it properly. But like I say, the fuel, the, the tax, the maybe not insurance, but generally speaking, the maintenance on these cars is so affordable. It's not like, you know, you can buy a BMW M6 now for 10 grand, and that's incredible. You know, you get a, you get a V10, uh, SMG gearbox, 507 brake horsepower, all for 10,000 pounds. However, with that, you know, if you need a new set of tires, it's a grand. If you need new brakes, a couple of grand. New clutch, God knows, right? Not to mention the engine blowing up. Um, whereas this, you know, if things do go wrong, it's not the end of the world. And do you know what, they often very rarely do. And I say rarely, but I've never actually had anything go wrong in this car. These cars are so, so reliable, and it is remarkable how cheap they are to buy used, certainly in the UK. A lot of you in Europe have said, um, they've been shocked at how, how affordable they are over here because they seem to be more expensive over there and also in the US. But if you are in the UK, 
definitely take advantage of this because if you're thinking about getting one of these, I can't implore you enough. Um, you know, I, I won't say exactly what I paid for this, but I certainly, after doing 20 or 30,000 miles on this, I'm pretty confident I won't lose any money. At this rate, I might gain some money because with things like the manual gearboxes becoming more desirable, naturally aspirated engines becoming rarer, these are starting to very slightly go up in value. So I'm pretty confident this isn't gonna be a financial hole for me when I do come to sell it. Um, and yeah, I mean, bloody hell, what a load of car for that sort of money. So um, yeah, I guess that's, that's really my last point. These Z4s, are incredible value for money and yeah they really aren't as much to, to buy as you may have thought. Ladies and gents, there we have it. There was five more things that I love about my Z4. Now, believe it or not, just before I sign off, there was one other thing I wanted to say that I loved about this car. It was on my list, but for some reason I just forgot to include it or got too many points down because I do love this car that much. Uh, it is the wheel. I think I got some proper shots of it earlier, but I know it's a steering wheel, but come on, I just love how small it is, and I just love the aesthetic of it. Those aluminium trim pieces are really nice. And yeah, it, to, to drive, to drive hard, or to cruise with, that steering wheel is just uh, fantastic. Uh, so I wanted to just say that before I signed this video off, uh, because I forgot to, to put it in, and when I was writing my things that I love down, I really wanted to mention that. So, the steering wheel is something that I love. If you've got a Z4, do you love your steering wheel as well? I would like to know. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching guys, that now completes the balance of 5 things I love and 5 things I hate. If you haven't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, uh, I'm actually completely desperate for followers, so please, please, please go and follow me on Instagram, I'm, I'm desperate. But yeah, no, on Instagram we're doing daily stuff on there, I'm doing loads of polls, asking you guys loads of questions, interacting with you. Um, so if you're here on YouTube and not on Instagram, I'd love to see you over there as well, and get to know you guys a bit better. And oh, just quickly before I go, I didn't know if I was going to mention this, but I think I will mention it. So secretly, a couple of days ago, I set up a Patreon account. Now, for those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it is a website that allows uh, fans of channels and viewers of channels who want to support the channel financially to donate monthly amounts of money or one-off payments to a YouTuber or a creator. So I have created a Patreon uh, very recently, uh, it's not gone live yet, but it will be live at the time of this video going live. Because I do invest a lot of money and a lot of time into making this content for you, and obviously from my numbers I'm not really generating any or near, nearly enough ad revenue to cover that. So, uh, in order to sustain this channel and to carry on being able to make this much content um, and, and do all of these things for you guys, I have set up a Patreon account in the hope that I might be able to get a little bit of financial support. So if you do feel like it's something you'd like to help me out with, um, the link is in the description and I really, really would appreciate any donations that, uh, that you guys do make. Of course, it's not something I like to ask for at all and if it is something that you're just like, why on earth would I do that? I completely, completely understand. But if you would like to help out, uh, the link's in the description. I won't say any more than that, but thank you so much in advance. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot more positive than obviously the things I hate video, so that's always good. Maybe we can get this one to 100 likes as well. If you have enjoyed it, do hit that thumbs up button. If you're still watching and you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, you've got this far, and I'm sure you've enjoyed it if you've got this far in this video. So. Hit the subscribe button, you won't miss future videos, which I'm sure you will enjoy as well. Uh, if you're still watching and you are subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, it really means the world, all of your support. Uh, it helps me to carry on making these videos, so I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon indeed for the next video. So take care guys, and I'll see you very, very soon.